People are scared of things that are different and people are scared of things that they don't understand and often because autism is an invisible disability if you see someone who's autistic you might not know their diagnosis you might just feel like something's weird about them and you don't get them and you don't understand what's happening which can be scary and can lead to a lot of bullying and ostracization and uh, unintentional discrimination. Over 95% of disabled roles are played by non-disabled actors, which is just mind-blowing a little bit. With one in every 68 Americans being autistic, if you are doing a show that in any way involves autism, you better be hiring an autistic actor or hiring an autistic director or writer because people with autism, we don't just want to be audience members, but we want to be employed. All through high school, I didn't have any friends, so I would spend lunch breaks just kind of pacing the hallway, not knowing who to talk to or how to talk to them or how to make a friend. So I was really kind of completely alone in my own head, but my grandmother had a subscription to Seattle Children's Theater, and when I got to sit in that audience in the dark and watch shows, sitting in that audience was really the one time that I felt seen and the one time that I felt silently heard, and sitting in that audience was really the one time I felt understood. People who are on the autism spectrum really like to know what the roles are and what's expected of them. But if we were peers and just ran into each other on the street when we weren't expecting to, there's no roles that say, here's how I'm supposed to act and here's how you're supposed to act. But when you get to see a show, you have a role you're given, the audience is playing a role, which is the audience, you're playing a role, which is the actor. It's a place where you get to experience all that human connection and all of the, all that stuff that really makes being human worth it. It made a big impact on me and is probably why I like doing theater so much today. I think I would make a very good astronaut. But to be a good astronaut, you have to be intelligent, and I'm intelligent. You also have to understand how machines work, and I'm good at understanding how machines work. I got to be the first actor on the autism spectrum to play Christopher Boone in The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And crazily enough, that also made me one of the first actors on the autism spectrum to play any autistic role ever. Because, you know, dating back to Rain Man and uh, Atypical or The Good Doctor, all these really meaty roles that are winning awards for autistic characters, Autistic actors have never been included in that process. If you are different, if you access the world differently, if you need special accommodations, then theater needs you. Inclusion in the arts matters because it leads directly to inclusion in life. I think often I'll interact with people or be on job interviews, and people are talking to me like I'm 14 years old, and it's just hard because I'm not 14 years old, I'm a dad, and I have two kids, and I need to pay the bills, and I need to do all the things that an adult needs to do. For anyone, it's a lot to do that and try to make money and pay the bills at the same time. So much of being a parent feels like, at least right now, going to daycare and going to sing-along groups and things like that with other parents, and that's where it feels different because all the other parents are mingling and talking, and then you're the weird dad in the corner with the headphones on, and people don't know what to make of it, or think you're just a, a really interesting choice for a nanny, <laughs> maybe, right? Um, so I think that, that that's where it affects parenthood most, but not with the kids, or in loving the kids, or in them loving me. People on the spectrum can speak for ourselves. We can advocate for ourselves, and that if you want to know about autism, you don't need to go to a parent of a child who's on the spectrum. You can just ask an adult who is on the spectrum directly and that we are the experts on our own lives. 
in autism, there's this concept of passing, which means if you've ever heard about high functioning or low functioning, that's baloney. Autism is like a circle more than a, a line. And really what people are talking about often when they talk about high functioning or low functioning is how well can you communicate in a way that I want to understand or listen and how well can you pass as neurotypical. Sometimes it can be really good to be, have that skill and be able to pass because it can be easier sometimes even though it takes a lot of energy. But sometimes it's really good just to be able to be you and be yourself and not have to worry about making all that tension in your hands disappear and making eye contact and communicating the way other people want you to. But it's scary to be yourself too. As a society, we can realize that so many of our jobs that we do, eye contact and handshakes and schmoozing, aren't part of the, have, have nothing to do with the actual job you would do once you got the job, right? And so if we can get over our need for in-person interviews with lots of small talk and eye contact and firm handshakes um, and really just think about working interviews where someone gets to do the job that they love doing, uh, autistic people are gonna be hired a lot more. <laughs> but even if they didn't let me, I would still go because that would be a dream come true.